Hi guys, my name is Trevor Sullivan. In this video, I wanted to share with you how you can use a serverless-based solution with AWS Lambda, Step Functions, and CloudWatch events to capture custom high-resolution metrics. In this example, we're going to capture a high-resolution metric every five seconds into the Amazon CloudWatch service, and we're going to pull a custom metric using the ECS cluster metric for running tasks and pending tasks. So we're already running an ECS cluster here, which is basically running a bunch of uh, Docker containers, and the compute services are running under EC2. So we have three container instances running, and as you can see, if we just keep refreshing here, the number of running tasks and pending tasks is constantly changing. So as a systems operator, I want to make sure that I'm able to monitor on an ongoing basis the number of running tasks and pending tasks. So once I'm able to capture that metric into Amazon CloudWatch, I can then start making scaling decisions based off of how many tasks are running and how many are in the pending state. That also kind of gives me an overall view of the health of the container cluster. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the metrics that are currently available in Amazon CloudWatch. If we come under Amazon CloudWatch and go over to Metrics and then choose ECS, you'll see that I have some metrics related to CPU utilization and memory utilization. However, we don't have any metrics that show us the number of running tasks or pending tasks. So in this example, we're just going to use the ECS cluster to gather some custom metrics, although keep in mind that you can apply this technique to gather custom metrics to virtually any service that has an endpoint that you're able to access. So this means that you can, you can use this technique to actually gather custom metrics from your own application, assuming that you expose those metrics through some kind of endpoint. Okay, so let's go ahead and start building. So the first thing that we're going to do is come over to the Identity and Access Management Console, and we're going to create what's called an IAM role. So the IAM role is basically the identity that the AWS Lambda function is going to execute under, and it's going to have the permissions that give Lambda access to the ECS service. So what we're gonna do is basically say that our trusted entity here, or the service that we want to use this role with, is Lambda. The next thing we're gonna do is choose the IAM policies or permissions that we want this Lambda function to have. So because this Lambda function is going to be writing to Amazon CloudWatch, we need to, we need to make sure that we attach a policy that gives it permission to CloudWatch. So this is a rather liberal policy, so it's CloudWatch events full access, but because we do want to make sure that our Lambda function has access to write logs into CloudWatch, as well as, as well as write metrics, we're going to go ahead and just choose this for now. In a production application, you'd want to make sure that that's locked down a little bit more specifically to specific APIs within CloudWatch that your Lambda function needs to call. So the next policy that we're going to attach is going to enable the Lambda function to reach out to the ECS service. So uh, very similar, this is a very liberal policy. So this is going to give full access to the Elastic Container Service or ECS service. But let's go ahead and just choose this for the sake of example. So that's all of the permission that our Lambda role should need. So I'm going to call this write ECS metric. So when we create the Lambda function, we're simply going to assign it this IAM role, and it's going to inherit the permissions that are defined on these two built-in policies. Now, the important thing here is that the trusted entity is lambda.amazonaws.com, and that's going to basically indicate to us that Lambda will be able to consume this role. So let's take a look at how that works. It's great. So now that we've, writ we've created that ECS role for Lambda, let's come over to the Lambda Management Console. So in Lambda, we're going to go ahead and just create a new function. We're going to call this write ECS metric. We're going to choose the Python 3.6 runtime, although if you know Node.js, JavaScript, or Java or C Sharp better, you can certainly use one of those AWS SDKs instead. Next, we're going to choose the IAM role that we just created. So this is basically the permissions that we're going to assign to this Lambda function to allow it to gather the appropriate metric data and write it into CloudWatch metrics. So let's go ahead and create a new function. So we're going to worry about triggers later because we're actually going to trigger this Lambda function every five seconds from a step function. But let's go ahead and just scroll down here to the code. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is call import Bodo3 at the top. So the Bodo3 library is the AWS SDK for Python. And so we're going to go ahead and import that so it's available inside of our environment. So the next thing we're going to do is create a couple of client objects. So we're going to create an ECS client object. So Bodo3.client ECS. And then we're also going to grab a CloudWatch client and just store that in a CW variable. So we'll do Bodo3.client CloudWatch. If you ever need to reference the documentation for the Bodo3 SDK, which we'll do regularly here, we'll just go ahead and switch over to bodo3.readthedocs.io, and this contains all of the documentation for Bodo3. So let's go ahead and just validate that we get the CloudWatch client directly correctly. Uh, so we'll come over to CloudWatch service, and sure enough, we import Bodo3, and then we simply reference client CloudWatch. So CloudWatch, the CloudWatch object actually contains the put metric data API, which we're going to call to write our own custom metric into CloudWatch from ECS. If we switch over to ECS, we're going to use the describe clusters API, and that's going to retrieve the ECS cluster that we want to gather that custom metric from. So if we scroll down here and check out the response that we'll get from that API. It actually has a couple of useful properties, which is running tasks count, pending tasks count, and it even tells us the number of active services that are being maintained. It also tells us how many EC2 instances are registered with that container cluster because the underlying compute or the EC2 instances that are reporting to that cluster could change over time as well if it's set up for auto scaling. Okay, so let's switch back over to our Lambda management console here. And once we get the CloudWatch client, the first thing we're going to do is actually gather the metric data. So let's go ahead and just go to the ECS object and call the describe clusters API. So we want to make sure that we specify the cluster name that we want to retrieve data from. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to actually pass it in dynamically. And so this event object is going to contain a key in the future that tells us which cluster we want to retrieve. So let's go ahead and just do event and then index into it and grab the ECS cluster name attribute from it. And that's going to be the cluster name that we want to retrieve from. And so the parameter name is clusters. And that's an array, so we need to make sure that we specify an array syntax there. And let's go ahead and assign that to the cluster variable. And because we get back an array from this API, we also need to just index into it and grab the first element, which will be the cluster that we requested. The next thing we need to do is to actually construct the metric itself. So the metric is going to be a dict object in Python. And so that's going to have a namespace attribute. And so let's just call that Trevor slash ECS. You can specify whatever you want for the namespace. That's just for CloudWatch uh, metric tracking. And then we also need to specify the metric data. And so metric data is actually going to be an array of metric objects that we want to write into CloudWatch. So each of these metrics is going to have a metric name It'll have an optional set of dimensions, and we'll go ahead and just leave that off. So let's call our first metric running tasks. And then we'll say the value of this is going to be our cluster running tasks count. We'll validate that in just a moment. Next, we're going to specify our unit, which is going to be count. And finally, make sure that you set the storage resolution attribute to 1. And that's going to indicate to the Amazon CloudWatch service that this is a high-resolution metric. Uh, and high-resolution is basically defined as a metric that's being gathered more, than, more frequently than once per minute. So we're actually going to gather the metric every 5 seconds in this case. So let's go ahead and just specify two different metrics that we're going to get here. And then let's switch back over to the docs here and just check out the actual attribute name. So it's going to be running tasks count and pending tasks count. So let's go ahead and just rename the second metric to pending tasks. 
and the value is going to be the cluster object up here, and pending tasks count. Uh, so the metric dimension, let's go ahead and actually specify that because maybe we want to ca capture this metric for, you know, multiple uh, clusters. So let's add a metric dimension with a name of the cluster itself. So that's going to be the same event, ECS cluster name. And then the value, or sorry, the value is going to be that. And the name is going to be ECS cluster name. So that'll be just the, the name of the cluster. Or we can just call it cluster name. Okay, so then we need to assign the dimension as an array. And we'll just go ahead and add metric dimension there. And let's go ahead and copy that and put it onto this metric as well. Okay, so now we've defined the actual metrics that we want to place. So let's go ahead and just call cloudwatch.putMetricData. And then we're going to pass in the metric object that we have constructed. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and save this for now. And let's go ahead and just test this out and see what happens. So I'm going to pass in ECS cluster name of ECS Esgaroth, which I believe is my cluster name. And let's go ahead and just pass this in as an event. So we'll just save this as a sample input event. And we'll create that. And so now we'll pass in that event and actually hit test to see if it works correctly. So we get execution failed here. So let's take a quick look at what's going on. So it looks like it's complaining that we didn't pass in a proper value into the function here, the describe clusters API. So let's go ahead and see if we can figure out what's going on there. So ecs.describe clusters, cluster equals event ecs cluster name. Let's go ahead and just add some logging statements down here to make sure that this is working correctly. Okay, so we're going to do print ECS cluster name. Let's go ahead and save this and we'll just test that out again. And so we do get ECS Esgaroth there, which is correct. That's what we're expecting. So let's go ahead and just make sure that we've got the correct cluster name. Yep, it's ECS Esgaroth. Go ahead and test this out again. Grab our details here. So let's go ahead and check out the docs here really quick. Okay, so it's expecting client.describe clusters should be an array of clusters. And I believe that's what we're passing in here. So we've got clusters equals event ECS cluster name, which is correct. So let's go ahead and just delete this zero here. Save that, test it out, and see what we get. Okay, so it looks like maybe that API is actually working without the zero on the end. I thought it returned an array but it looks like it's just returning maybe a singleton object. Um, so let's go ahead and just print out the cluster entity here, and we'll just validate that we actually have the correct syntax for that. So when we run that, we have clusters. Oh, I, I see here. Okay, so what we need to actually do is index into clusters and then go into index number zero there. So we actually had a um, slight bug there. So let's go ahead and just come back up here and check this out. So we've got cluster arn, we've got cluster name, we've got the running tasks count and pending tasks count. So that's perfect. So we actually are getting the right data back. And as you can see, it's complaining that our write ECS metric IAM role doesn't actually have permission to put metric data. 
So let's come over here to the IAM service, go to roles, and then we'll pull up our write ECS metric role. And we are going to go ahead and attach a new policy. So it looks like we actually had a small bug here. So we did CloudWatch events full access, but what we actually want is CloudWatch full access. And so that's gonna give it access to all the different CloudWatch APIs, things like logging and uh, CloudWatch metrics and things like that. So let's go ahead and attach that policy and we'll go ahead and retest our Lambda function and we should be good to go at that point. Okay, so our code looks all good here. Uh, maybe we'll just add a, an extra logging statement here. So right before we actually write the metric data, we'll just write that metric object out. And that will make sure that we are tracking the metric correctly. So our execution has failed here. Let's find out what's going on. So invalid parameter value. So it's saying, oh, you need to specify the correct unit. And it looks like we have a simple capitalization error there. I think I did lowercase count and we need uppercase count. So let's go ahead and save that and retest. Okay, so let's hit test again here, make sure we get a new execution. And, oh, I only fixed one of them and we have two different metrics. So let's come down here, put the correct one for that. And let's retest one more time. Okay, great. Now we have a success here. So we fixed up that little policy error we had. We uh, fixed the key error and we also fixed the capitalization error that we had. And we now uh, have the successful output from our Lambda function. And so that's basically just confirming that we are getting that custom metric written into Amazon CloudWatch. So let's come back over to CloudWatch, go down to metrics and look at this. We have this new namespace called Trevor slash ECS with cluster name. And we have two different metrics, one called pending tasks and one called running tasks. Great, so let's go ahead and just choose both of those, those metrics here. Uh, we'll come over to the graph options here and we maybe will set our limits to 100 and zero. And let's look at a one hour period. So let's start looking for some data points here. So I'm not seeing any data points. So let's go ahead and switch back over to Lambda again. Test our function. And um, it looks like we have the right values here. So our dimension is cluster name ECS Esgaroth. The issue that we might have had is that we didn't specify the dimension. So let's go ahead and come into these metrics. And we do actually have the dimension there. So let's just wait a moment to make sure that those metric data points actually show up. And sure enough, here they are. So it looks like maybe we just had a brief delay there with the actual metrics showing up. Okay, great. So now that we've actually verified that our metrics are coming in properly, let's just do a quick sanity check here. I just want to run this a couple of more times and make sure that it's working correctly. So there's one more execution and let's wait one, two, three, four, five and test again. Okay, and let's come back here to CloudWatch and we are going to choose a 10 second refresh interval. And I think actually what happened here is that I forgot to set the period. So the period actually we're gonna to set to one second and now you can see a lot more data points. So what was happening is I was actually getting an aggregate uh, metric across five minutes by default. So what you actually have to do is set the display period to uh, what your actual display period is or something more frequent to actually see those detailed metrics. So. Uh, as long as we set it to five seconds or one second, that's actually going to show us all these detailed metric data points. So great. So we've tested that our Lambda function is working. So the next thing we want to do is create what's called a step function. And the step function is going to control the execution of the Lambda function every five seconds. And the reason that we have to create the step function in this case is because CloudWatch events can only trigger Lambda directly as frequently as once per minute. And we want to gather this metric every five seconds, right? So what I'm going to do in this case is cheat just a little bit and come over to a blog post that I wrote called uh, Capturing Custom High Resolution Metrics from Containers Using uh, AWS Step Functions. And this actually has the state machine already written. 
so let's go ahead and just copy the state machine here. And I'll kind of walk you through what the state machine looks like. So I'm going to copy that code and then launch it in VS Code here because we need to make a quick edit to it. And the edit that we need to create is the basically just the Lambda function that we're invoking here. So we are going to call our Lambda function named. Uh, let's find out here really quick. So the resource we're going to call is right ECS metric. So let's go ahead and just copy this ARN here. And we are going to do a mass search and replace of that value with this value. And everything else I believe will stay the same. We should have valid JSON here. Looks good. So basically what we're doing here in this state machine is, let's refresh this visual workflow here. So this is kind of cool. Let's do a horizontal view here and then zoom in a little bit. So basically what we have is we have the starting of the state machine here, and then we have this huge parallel branch, right? And the parallel branch is going to control the execution of the right metric lambda function every five seconds. So it's going to come over here to this first branch. It's going to execute it immediately. Then it's going to wait five seconds and write it again. Then it's going to wait 10 seconds and write it again all the way up through the end, which is the 55th second of every minute. And so this step function is going to execute for a one minute period and then exit. And then it's going to get reinvoked at the next minute using CloudWatch events. So um, let's go ahead and just call this write ECS metric and then we also have to choose an IAM role for our state machine. And typically on the first run experience with state machines, you'll get this automatic uh, states execution role. All that does is it gives step functions the ability to execute or invoke your Lambda functions. So go ahead and just leave that as is uh, if you've used the first run experience with state machines before. And then go ahead and just click create state machine. So if we come over here and check out the state machine, sure enough, it still shows correctly here. Uh, all of our branches are intact, and we're going to hold off on actually executing that. So let's go ahead and jump over to our final step, which is to create a CloudWatch events that's going to handle this for us. So we're going to come under roles, do create role, and we're going to create a new role that is used with the CloudWatch events service. So CloudWatch events is going to trigger our step function for us. And let's just make sure that it's got all the right permissions. So it looks like it doesn't have the right permissions. So let's call this right ECS metric CloudWatch. And let's create that role. And then after we create the role, we are going to add some more permissions. So basically we're going to give this access to the step function service. So this is gonna give it full access to step functions. Again, I don't really recommend this. You'll probably want a policy that only gives it access to invoke step functions, but for the time being, uh, we'll just give it full access to step functions. And then under trust relationships, just validate that the CloudWatch events service has access to the role as a trusted entity. Okay, so now we're gonna come under CloudWatch events so CloudWatch, then go to events and then rules. So we're gonna create this new rule. And what we're gonna do is set it up to run on a schedule every one minute. So you can use what's called a rate expression here, or if you prefer, you can certainly use a cron expression as well. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. So we're basically just saying run once every minute. And then we're gonna add a target. So the target is in this case is gonna be a step function state machine. We're gonna choose the state machine that we just created here. And then we're going to tell it to use an existing role. So we already set up that role. It's called write ECS metric dash CloudWatch. And I think that's everything here. So we're just gonna validate the schedule. Looks good. Uh, let's actually do zero. I think it's zero slash one that we need to do. Let's just use a rate expression, actually, because I don't want to mess that up. And then we'll do configure details, and we'll call this write ECS metric. And we'll go ahead and create the rule. 
And so now that we've created this rule, it's gonna start triggering once every minute, and that's gonna kick off our state machine. Our state machine is gonna handle executing that Lambda function every five seconds. So let's go ahead and monitor the success of this service by actually checking out the state machine. So we don't currently have any running state machines, but we should in just a moment here. Okay, so it looks like our state machine actually failed, and let's check out why exactly that is. So we'll scroll down here to the individual states, and we'll see that the parallel state failed, and the execution failed. So we have a key error here, and it's basically complaining that it doesn't have it has a key error here. And what we forgot to do, of course, I knew I was going to do this, is when we set up the CloudWatch event rule, we need to pass in a JSON string that contains the name of the cluster. So let's go ahead and just edit this rule. And we need to configure input and choose a constant JSON text. So what I'm going to do is specify a JSON object, ECS cluster name, and specify the value ECS Esgaroth. That's my ECS cluster name. And then we are going to do configure details and update the rule. Okay, so hopefully that's everything now. Let's come under step functions here. We have two errors, two finished. Let's go ahead and wait for another to start running. And let's just validate that the second error was actually the same thing too. Most likely it was. Yeah, sure enough, we had a key error from our Lambda function. It's basically just complaining that the Lambda function didn't receive the ECS cluster name in the event object that was passed to it. So now that we've fixed that, it should start working properly. Okay, so now you can see that we have a new step function invoking. And what's cool is that you can actually watch it in action, right? So we can actually come in here and just expand this out. And you'll see that every five seconds, it's, it's set to automatically refresh here. You can see that every five seconds, it's going to kick off that Lambda function. And of course, the Lambda function, as we tested it, is gathering the metric and writing it into Amazon CloudWatch. So as soon as we created that CloudWatch events rule, that is basically what triggered the flow of events to step functions. And then of course, step functions itself is controlling the execution of our metric gathering Lambda function. So we can actually just sit here and watch this work. And I think it refreshes like every 10 seconds or something like that in the browser. And as soon as this finishes running, it's actually going, CloudWatch events is actually going to kick off a new execution. So if we come back up to the state machine, this step function succeeded for that one minute period, but we actually have another one already running, right? So every minute, it's going to keep kicking off a new step function state machine execution, and that's going to keep kicking off the Lambda function that gathers our metric. And what we can do is come over to Lambda and actually check out the monitoring section of it and make sure that it's working correctly. So you'll see that our Lambda function is getting executed basically 12 times for every five second period within a one minute period. So um, so once that's all set up, you're all good to go. The final validation that we just want to do is come over to Amazon CloudWatch and create a metric chart here, just like we did earlier. We're going to add our two custom metrics that we created here. And of course, make sure you come over to the options and set it to every five seconds. And you can set the auto refresh period to 10 seconds. And that's gonna give you this nice, really, really detailed graph of the two custom metrics that we are gathering. And if you just hover over each one, you can actually see what the current values are for that period, right? So these are happening every five seconds. Um, if you'd prefer, you can aggregate them up into, you know, 30 seconds or one minute to make it a little less busy looking. But now that you're gathering this high resolution metric every five seconds, you can now start to make scaling decisions based upon this very detailed information that you're getting back from the uh, custom metric that we've created. So that's everything I wanted to share with you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you find this technique useful, feel free to leave a comment with how you'd like to use it, and feel free to leave a thumbs up if, if this video helped. Thanks for, for watching, and check out the next videos. Cheers!